on the menu today? My name's Lady Fracting. Wow, cool. Fingers crossed. Welcome. Okay, Luke's poor will grow back. Oh, hello Chip Dippers. Welcome to Retro Recipes and welcome to the Atari VCS. Otherwise known as the Atari 2600, this machine was really built like a tank and essentially started the whole home computing revolution. No, you don't have any lines at this point. But it was the first computer, yeah, to actually be able to load different programs in, in this case from a cartridge. <laughs> Let's blow this thing and go home. Star Wars reference. But despite having just 128 bytes of RAM and a 1.19 MHz MOS Technology 6507 processor, the VCS still has sold over 30 million units and was responsible for the start of some little companies called Activision and Mattel. And Atari still sell versions of the VCS to this day. But it's one of its old games that is the very special reason why we'll be trying to refurbish, repair, and upgrade this version of the Atari VCS, the Heavy Sixer, as we refurbish, refurbish this. This, this, this. That woke her up. R1 was actually sold by US retail giant Sears and branded as the Sears Telegames. Yep, such was the power of Sears in 1977, they could actually ask Atari to remove their own logo. Although on my recent visit to Sears, it didn't look quite as powerful. Yeah, this and most of their stores closed for good shortly after as part of bankruptcy restructuring. Our particular unit is in okayish condition, a whoppering 44 years later, but I really want to make it look like new for that very special reason we'll get to in a secchi. No, not a specky. But I mean, it could be worse, right? Take a look at this incredible photo by Gavin Parsons. It shows the VCS in the tragic shipwreck of the Salem Express. I actually asked him if he could bring it back up for us if he ever goes back down there. Just remember, nothing is unrefurbishable. But our one is a kind donation from subscriber Zippy Zap, known as the Heavy Sixer. The Atari, I mean, not, uh, not the donor. And it was called that because it was, well, heavier and had six switches. The extra two switches are for player difficulty and were probably a great way to haze your friends when they came round by setting their side to novice. Ooh, burn. And the Heavy Sixer was actually the first ever model, making this unit pretty rare. Future models were known as the Woody and the Darth Vader, for reasons that are probably obvious. And indeed, they were a little smaller and flatter than our one, as Puppy Fratic is trying to make herself here. Yeah, being half Great Pyrenees and half German Shepherd, she really does like sleeping on cold floors. Speaking of being tired though, there was a pneumatic drill outside our house all last night. Luckily, it wasn't turned on. <laughs> <laughs> well, moving on. Thank you. What is our very special reason for refurbishing this one? Well, I don't think anyone could explain it better than a 10 year old Babby Fractic. Hey! Hello. I'm Lady Fractic, and I'm on vacation from California. Wow, cool. Wow, cool. Mom, can you buy me an Atari? That's right. While the mini Lady Fractic stuff probably didn't happen, as I can recall. The rest is absolutely true. You see, the game box didn't say for the Atari VCS video computer system or Atari 2600. It simply says for Atari and Sears video game systems. And so we bought an Atari 400. You can maybe see it hiding behind Puppy Fractic there because that is an Atari video game system. Thanks, Atari. Um, in my first year of owning my very own computer, I spent it playing Asteroids. Still cool, but it wasn't Star Wars The Empire Strikes Back, and you guys know how much I love Star Wars Atari video games. Red 5 standing by. The force will be with you. Look at the size of that thing. Red 5, I'm going in. Here we go. Quick. 
And would you believe Empire Strikes Back was the only video game not made for the Atari 400 or 800? They did Star Wars A New Hope and Return of the Jedi, and for some reason missed out the middle episode. Again, thanks Atari. And so 37 years on, after my trip to that shop, and with Empire Strikes Back, back in the cinemas right now, I've acquired The Empire Strikes Back, the one game that eluded me from the very start. But there is another obstacle on our path to redemption and success, because our Atari VCS Heavy Sixer actually has a fault. Uh, this is a known fault that the donor told me about, and unfortunately when you power it on, it just gives this black screen. No doubt the work of the evil galactic empire, right? No, they don't know what dogs are. You'll be fine. <laughs> but even if the video did work, and chances are it would look something like this. So I want to give this machine a video upgrade either way. So let's try to put everything right and make our VCS shine like it's 1977. I think we'll chance it. Whoa, this is really where the 1970s design elements of the innards become apparent. And I'm actually going to be losing this RF cable and the RF circuit. More on that in a second. But for now, we'll just put this on eBay. Uh, put this on Craigslist. And I think some of this will be a great candidate for putting in the wish dosher, so we'll do that in a moment. I do, however, want to protect and save this original label, so let's peel this one off. The other one, however, doesn't come off so easily, so it's over to the goo gone, so we can make the goo be, be gone. Recycle that. I'm wearing a Star Wars t-shirt. And this of course isn't a dog treat, but these dishwasher pods do contain anti-corrosive agents, so actually very helpful to leave in there. And we'll just set it to a quick wash and of course turn off heat dry so nothing melts. Now my hope is that the black screen is caused by the RF circuit, radio frequency circuit. So let's replace that completely with this composite mod solved by the future was 8-bit. See if it solves our problem. Here's how this works. The Atari's oscillator circuit takes the audio signal from the television interface adapter chip and combines it with the video signal, which is then sent to the RF output. So normally you'd have to tune your old TV to find the channel that the Atari was broadcasting on. But as part of this mod, we'll remove those components completely to disable that behavior and give a cleaner picture via composite instead of RF, as well as preventing audio interference. With those removed, then we'll tap a yellow composite wire directly to the video output on the PCB and a white audio wire to the audio output. But first, a word from our spoon. 
oh, sponsor, sorry. <laughs> uh, because you could actually easily make your own one of these composite mod kits. And for that, I recommend PCB Way. Excuse me, Way. Yep, they make great quality PCBs for just $5. Because as we all know, PCB stands for Playful Computers Broken. Doesn't it? Yeah, she said it does. And I also have this upgrade kit from Console 5, which includes a gobstopper. I'll try that for dinner, I think. Um, but these are all replacement parts for the parts that commonly fail. So let's set about preparing the board. I'm gonna remove all the chips with this handy dandy chip puller. See my website for links to all of this stuff that I recommend. And I'll also start removing those components to get ready for that composite mod. You can see in this diagram the things we have to remove and the wires we have to fit. Good as new. Well, I guess it is new. And look at that, there's a bit of electrolytic leakage from the capacitor. Naughty capacitor, deserved what you got. So we'll clean that up, but it doesn't look like it's damaged anything else, fortunately.
As you can see, I really do think it's important to treat these classic vintage machines with the love and care that they deserve. Oops. And in just a second, we'll put everything back together, refurbish the case, and see if it works. There is one more obstacle. The donor told me about the black screen fault and showed me some video of it, but he also told me it doesn't come with a power supply. He was using another one from another machine. So we're gonna have to buy a power supply to test our modifications and repair. So for that, let's pop to a little local mom and pop store. Down six feet apart. Is that a heavy six or a light six? Hmm. But unfortunately, they have the wrong tips and the wrong polarity. We need negative, not to seem negative. So, how about this little store? No good either. I don't know, Walmart just isn't the same these days. Not sure why. Anyway, I've ordered one from good old Amazon.com. And with our PSU still en route, let's go ahead and just reassemble everything and start working on some of those cosmetic fixes on the outside. First, now we've got this piece out of the wish dosher, there's a few more failure prone parts to replace. No, no, please, no. <laughs> now some experts do claim that they don't cause failures, but well you saw that leakage on the board earlier, so I'd rather avoid that happening again. And let's make sure our heavy sixer is a smooth sixer. And we'll replace these two chiclet capacitors. But I've discovered something that I think is a bit of a design flaw. You can see here that at the factory they tried to solder the heatsink to the board, but the solder actually never took, probably because the heat dispersion is so vast on the heatsink itself. So actually the heatsink kind of hovers loose on the board, meaning all the weight of the heatsink is on the three pins of this voltage regulator, which you can see that I'm replacing here. Now this caused a problem because all the pads of the voltage regulator lifted up because they were taking the strain. So I'm just using house electrical wire here. This serves two purposes. 
Firstly, it replaces those traces that were lifted up and takes them to their next destination points. And secondly, it's going to add a lot of stability, essentially like three solid legs instead of that heatsink clip, which just doesn't work. Now, in hindsight, I should have been a bit more gentle, but you, know, you live and learn, and this is actually going to be better than it was before, strength-wise, if not appearance-wise. <coughs> yeah. And as a final part of the video upgrade, we need to completely remove the RF modulator from the circuit. Now, as you can see, unfortunately, this looks like it was in a room that was painted white and I couldn't get those off. We'll deal with those in a second though, but the inside looks brand new and so solid. Let's try and just cosmetically fix some of these things and smooth them out using Lady Fractic's nail file. Yeah, don't tell her I used her toothbrush earlier as well. Hey, I heard that. Oh. Now it's fine to sand that down because it is solid black plastic through and through, but to make it look brand new black, you could use that car silicone stuff that you spray onto dashboards. As you know, it leaves a bit of an oil-like slick, uh, but I actually prefer to use good old extra virgin olive oil. This may sound crazy and obviously it's up to you what you use, but this stuff does the same job. And because plastic is porous, I believe it also helps condition the plastic and just keep things a little stronger and less brittle than they might be otherwise. And of course it's all natural and smells delicious. Well, this is retro recipes after all. I think these dots will completely disappear after we add a nice oil slick. And as you can see, the switch panel used to have this silver surround, so let's fix that too. All right, looking good. Here's a quick reminder of how she looked before, before the big reveal.
beautiful. Well, while that was all happening, our PSU has arrived. So let's go plug it in. Please, everybody, cross your feet, legs, fingers, arms, hair, whatever you've got. Let's give it a go. I've got a good feeling about this. Well, I'll be okay. Um, let's use Atari's flowchart. It's a diagnostic flowchart that can maybe help us pinpoint what's going wrong. I'm, I'm fine. I'm seriously, I'm fine. <laughs> You've got a cold nose. <laughs> We're getting a solid five volts DC at the voltage regulator. The three chips are getting five volts from ground and so is the composite mod that we did. Cartridge port's clean, the connections are good, and I've tried several of these games that were kindly donated too. Now, the only one that's showing any sign of life is Donkey Kong, sorry, Donkey Kong, and it just shows this brief bit of data on my testing screen. And this at least confirms the machine is alive and it's outputting something, so it could be worse. And all of this leads the Atari flowchart to recommend swapping out the three chips, the RAM, processor, and the TIA chip stands for Television Interface Adapter, doesn't it? Yeah, actually it does. And I reckon that that is the most likely cause of this right mucking fuddle. Now those chips are actually getting rarer than Space Hen's teeth. So I've ordered a faulty Darth Vader VCS from Fleabay to act as a donor. Sorry, Anakin. And we've got a working video chip coming all the way from Canada on Fleabay as well. And it didn't even cost me an arm and a leg. Sorry, Anakin. All of which means that it's the faults, not the force, that's with us today. So we're going to have to end this video on as much of a cliffhanger as The Empire Strikes Back itself. That's okay, future self. I've waited 37 years. What's another week or two? Plus, I think it's important in life to show successes as well as failures, failures, failures. Indeed, make sure you subscribe and click that bell so you get notified when the video is ready. And trust me, it is going to be a blast. Hopefully of the snow speeder kind, not the chip kind. Thanks for watching. Subscribe and join below. And remember, Force will be with you always. <laughs> you did good. You did good. Yeah. You didn't fart. You only yawned 17 times. You did very good with that filming. Yeah. What a good kill. What a good kill. <laughs> She's sweeping the Omnibot with her tail. <laughs> it needs a cleaning. Okay, let's go. Come on. Yeah.